Right, today we are looking at this Sony um, SLV E700. Uh, VHS player, uh, Nikon PDC Video Plus. At the moment, it has no power going to it, so looks like we're going to have to take it apart, see if we can fix it. Right, let's just connect up our known working power cable to it. Just a box standard figure of eight one. Ooh, it gives you the old as it goes in. Let's turn it around this way. Uh, I presume that should have a display on it. We've got no lights at all. Absolutely nothing going on in there. Yeah. It's got a tape in it as well. Uh, this is pretty covered in dust. So let's pull this apart, take the power out, All right, let's de-dust it a bit and we'll get it in bits. Ah, it's, like, it's like tape that's like chewing gum. All right, so we've got some of the dust off of it, let's just undo the screws on the side. Oh, and uh, yeah, we got this from a car boot sale. We only paid, I think it was four pounds. But of course, the owner of it that was selling it, actually this was a lady selling this one. But oh, it's lovely. It works a treat. Yep, yeah, it's brilliant. Works absolute fine. But I don't have the remote for it, so. I think someone's telling porkies again as usual. So trouble with car boots, you're never going to see them again, you're never going to take it back, but as we like to fix stuff, well, we like to try and fix stuff, for £4, you know, it's worth a gamble. So, is it just those ones? Yep. So, two screws either side, just get the lid off. Right, so we're just going to have a look in the power side of things here, just see if we can see any blown capacitors or anything in there or we can test that fuse out see if that fuse is alright not sure whether that cap is bulging at all I think so right, we can't see any bulging caps or anything in here we might have to take everything out just to get down there and see what's going on We've got a tape that's in here. Uh, is this a transformer in here that's all shielded? No. So this is all our primary side. Now, you know, you might take a look in here and think, God, I'm not going to be able to fix that. There's nothing I can do now. I don't know what I'm looking at, but I don't know what I'm looking at. But we know a little bit about capacitors and stuff like that. But first of all, we've got a fuse down in here that we should go and test. Right, so we've just got our multimeter out. Uh, we're just going to put it on um, continuity. Just to... to that's not, oh, I keep forgetting about This is a new one to me. I keep forgetting you've got to change the modes to continuity. So there, we get a beep if we've got continuity across it. So we're just going to put them down onto this fuse. So we know the fuse is okay. Which is that fuse down there I was just touching. It is a T2, so it's 2 amp, 250 volts go through there. What have we got shielded under here? I think we're going to have to take a lot of this apart. I don't think we can get to it from the bottom. We might be able to. Alright. What we're going to do, we're going to take the bottom off, see if we can get to the uh, 
circuit board and maybe test some stuff without undoing everything and taking all the innards out. All these screws are all the same, so just be careful when you do yours. Whether you've got might have difference of long screws and short screws, you need to make sure they go back in the right place. Otherwise, you could be putting a long screw in a short hole and go putting it through the board. Right, so that's now going to lift up. It's looking all dirty and scummy in there. Is this dirt or it's a bit of dirt and a bit of heat transfer maybe. Right now we do want to be careful what we're touching in here because we don't know whether these capacitors are discharged yet or how much is in the capacitors. This is all looking a bit brown around here. This is all the primary. And that's your secondary. So your primary is all your mains voltage coming in. So this is the danger area. You don't want to be putting your fingers on that until you know capacitors are discharged. Just turn it around here so you can see. There, we can see up here, this is a primary. It's looking a bit dirty all around now. I don't know whether the catch leaks, maybe. Could just be a capacitor problem. But I now want to see where some of these capacitors are. This is a big one. It does look a little bit suspect. Um, so let's measure this cap, see if it's got any um, voltage in there. So let's put our multimeter on volts. And well, let's turn it around the other way. So as you can see there, there is still 130 volts in that cap. You see it's going all over the place. It's going to 130 then. This is where you have to have a bit of knowledge about you and sort of kind of like know what you're looking at. These capacitors, capacitors, you know, they can hold big charges in it. They can even, you know, hold over 400 volts you know, in some systems. So just be very careful, especially on the primary side. Once it's come out of the primary into the secondary, you know, it's usually down to DC voltage then, and you're dealing with a, a lot, lot lower voltages. As you can see, you printed on the board here. I don't know if you can see printed on the board here. Yeah, so now if you can see printed on the board here, here we have like a six volt, got two grounds, your 13 volt and your 18 volt. So underneath underneath here was that big silver was that big silver block. So that is where you know your primary coming in, your high voltage coming in is then gets reduced down to your lower voltages that's going into the machine. Well, I must say I know nothing about electronics. Only the basic stuff. That I've sort of watched and watched on YouTube and learnt throughout the years. And my knowledge of this is very, very basic. Um, so we've got another primary going up in here. I'm just going to check the voltages that are coming up into this one. This one has got its plus and minus on here. Hundred and two millivolts. So not even volts. Let's see, was that just millivolts? Right, so I'm just gonna have a quick look around here now. Test um, test a few of the components. Um, when I find something I'll come back and show you what I found, hopefully. Right, so we've managed just to pull the um, power supply board out of the unit. 
right, let's bring this back in here. Right, so it just comes out separately. As you saw before, that's where you know your power supply comes in, that's where it was. So you managed to take that board out on its own. Just had like a, a cup connectors on the front here and one on the back. Right, and then what we did, we actually plugged it into the power supply. And I was very careful not to touch anything on this primary side. But we took our, well, I took the multimeter, I measured this capacitor. This capacitor was charging okay, um, it was charging up to 330 volts. Um, and then it was slowly discharging, so parts of this are working. Um, and as you can see, <clears throat> from this capacitor, it then carries up into like the transformer unit here. Um, this is, was basically soldered in there. Which probably as you saw from the previous shot, this is what had the the shield over it. Um, so we unsolder the bottom of there so we could get this out. Because uh, also, also what I did after measuring um, the capacitor, this big capacitor is on this side. You know the power is basically going flowing through the primary, and then that unit was on this side, so that converts it then down into your power outlets. So I don't know if you can see in here. This pin uh, should have been six volts. Then you got two grounds. Then you got a 13 volt. Um, it was only. Uh, four pins, so I'm not sure what the 18 volts is. That's obviously not there because we only had the four pins for six volts, ground, ground, 13 volts. Now I measured these ones with it plugged in, and there was absolutely no voltage coming over to here, which is why then I unsoldered the mounting brackets for this metal case. Uh, you know, they just come through there, so it's unsoldering them to get this unit out. And then once you got it out, I basically just saw all this brown liquid that's over there. Not sure where we can see it on the camera, but this whole bottom, this, this this has been out overnight now, so it's kind of like drained to the bottom. But you can see all the brown liquid on here. So I think what's happened is probably, you know, these capacitors on this board have just taken a dump everywhere, and they've probably just ooze their guts out all over the board. So I'm just going to see if I can slide this out of its plastic frame. It should just slide up. You can see it's covered in gunk. Let's see, let's just go and get a cloth and wipe some of this off. Yeah, and it looks like as well, this is this is recent. I don't know whether it's like just happened, where it's been sat for a while and then Try to turn it on, and it's just the capacitors like that. I've had enough. Let's get rid of some of this gunk everywhere. So when these capacitors go as well, it's actually corrosive for the board. It can actually um, corrode all your copper tracks all your copper traces on the actual board so if, all, if it all flooded through to this side it can actually corrode all your copper contacts on there so let's just get some of this muck out of here stop spreading it around everywhere you can see all the, all the muck that's come off of there Try and get it off the fingers. This looks like it should just pull out of here. This board, I'm hoping. I go just slides in a. <clears throat> couple of rails on the side of the plastic. 
So here you can see on the on the back of here everything that's oozed out. So something's definitely blown. I mean, but also in here, this is just full of dust and dirt. So it's all going to need a good clean up. So it's hard to tell, really, what has what has blown. But I would imagine, you know, it's it stands up, but it's like all the muck seems like it's everywhere. So I'm just going to have uh, just going to clean this up a bit because it is a bit messy. I mean, it does look a lot dirtier all over this area. Which is under here, which is just, I think this is just like coils of your, your coil, your transformer coils in there. But let's give this a quick clean up and then we'll take them capacitors off. Uh, what did I just do with that brush? Oh, let's take it out. It's a bit of IPA, nice pipe, propyl. Give this a gentle little, gentle little clean up. What we'll do now, I'm just going to turn the soldering on. I'm just going to pop these capacitors out of the board, and we'll uh, we'll check them to see if they've blown or anything. Just going to put magnifying glasses on and see if I can see anything else in here that's looks a bit poor. There's a lot of there's a lot of bobbling over this side. So it could be these capacitors have blown, but then you'd expect them to run down the board, so yeah. Anyway, let's pop these two capacitors out and see what we've got. This solder was melting quite easy, so I think it could possibly leaded solder that's in here. Not sure how old the unit is. I'm just gonna, basically going to heat these up with a solder sucker. See, let's put a little bit of flux on there. Uh, dab some flux on these pins just so the solder reflows a bit better. Soldering iron is only set to 350 degrees, but it's mounting pretty quick. Um, where's my solder wick? Oh, I'm just going to use some solder wick just to get these last couple of bits off.
was remembering which <coughs> where they go. So you've got the 16 volt, uh, 1000 microfarads to this side, and the 10 volt, 200 and, or 2200 microfarads on the other side. They are looking mucky on the bottom of there. Both of them looking mucky. Let's just wipe the soldering iron off. Alright, so we've just put our meter on our alka capacity readings. Let's get on there so you can see that down the bottom. So we take our first capacitor, put our minus on the minus side. Uh, positive on there. That doesn't look like it's reading anything. Ah, that looks like it's not reading a thing. Alright, let's check our other cap that's next to it. It should be 2200 microfarads. Oh, well, that's showing as uh, 2.5. But I think we'll replace. Yeah, so there we go. I mean, the bigger one, bigger capacitor, you're getting a reading in microfarads on there. Should be 2,200. Um, they have got a, a percentage, I think it's like 10% or so that they can be out. Is this big one going to read? So that's two and a half thousand, it should be 2,200. Uh, but the little one, the smaller 1,000 microfarad, we are getting no reading on at all. Quickly flashes up with a number and then that's it. That just stops reading anything. That is reading absolutely nothing, and that little dot is flashing. Whereas when we put it on the, the other one, the dot doesn't flash, it just slowly reads it. So, we're going to change the big one anyway. So, we're going to order up, we're going to order up a, a, a 10 volt 2200 ohm uh, capacitor. We're also going to order up. Uh, 16 volt 1000 microfarad capacitor so we'll get them ordered uh, we'll put this to the side for now I haven't got any spare ones I don't think I've got anything else I can take apart so we'll order them up we're I'm just gonna give this board a quick clean up with some IPA and my toothbrush just get some of all that done stuff out of there we might be able to see um, the other components a bit better then see if any other components are gone but we'll do these capacitors first and then we'll see if we've got any um, we'll then see if we've got any power coming through on our secondary rail over here see if we get our 6 volts and our 13 volt supply and by the power of editing the capacitors are here now right so another day we have had our capacitors delivered um, so like we said, we bought some of the 10 volt 2200 microfarads and 16 volts 1000 microfarad. Uh, you can only buy these in packs because you know they are so cheap really. Um, the pack of 16 volts 100 microfarads, which are these ones for five of them, that was 84p. And 
all of these at the same time the 10 volts 2200 microfarads they were one pound 34 for five and free delivery as well and make sure because they're inside of um, they're part of the primary they're inside like the shield uh, these are 105 degrees they need to be like the higher temperature ones which I think in generally are black um, compared with like these other ones that are sort of the the, the blue or like the purpley colors these ones are 85 degrees centigrade um, so that's like your lower voltage ones that are outside the board and uh, when you're you know when you're inside a, a transformer these things generate quite a bit of heat so you need the higher 105 degree ones so let's take these out and uh, we'll compare them with the old ones oh yeah if you wonder where I got these from I got these from RS components I'm not sponsored in any way by them it's just you know a website I know about to sell good components so I thought I'd stay with them right let's see if I can get the multimeter in here so you can see it all right let's go on to our capacitance a competitance can I say that word a capacitance setting and can you see that how well can you see that there we, there we go right so as you know our large one we had before the 2200 microfarads this one was reading 2.5 2.5 microfarads and also when you are testing these um, they're pretty much empty anyway of any charge but if you just put something metal across two pins yeah, you can use that you can use the tip of a screwdriver as long as they're not like the high voltage ones because you can cause damage but there's only there's minimal voltages in these ones so just know them out discharge them before you test them so we'll just test this again I mean, this one was uh, discharged anyway, so. Yeah, so that's 253. Now we're going to get our brand new one. And again, we'll short the pins out. Shouldn't come with any charging them, but just in case. It only needs like a second touching and that gets discharged. So let's test what the brand new one is. We go and that one is dead on 2.2 .2, so that's 2200 uh, if you remember you know our smaller one we got nothing from anyway so we'll just discharge that put it on there it did it does flash up with numbers and then it just completely vanishes and you get nothing from that so and let's Try our brand new one. Just short that out again. There you go, and that's pretty much dead on. Thousand microfarads, just under one thousand one hundred. But like I say, there is. Um, I forgot what I said. It's like ten to fifteen percent either way with these, and that's fine. Right, so let's get rid of this now and let's get these back into the board. Discard these two. I'll just put stuff back in here to keep it all together. So now I've got to get out. Even though I did try to clean this up a little bit, it's still pretty dirty down on this board. And also, when I was cleaning it, all these bubbles that I mentioned before, I think it was just like the, uh, they like little blisters. I think the actual uh, electrolytes from the capacitors have started to eat away at the board. So as I was rubbing it, rubbing it with um, IPA and the brush, 
all these little bubbles were coming up and it's exposed the copper tracks. So what we've also bought is some solder mask that I now can't find. Where have I put that? Oh, there. Uh, we bought some solder mask, which is basically what this green stuff is on the board. Uh, this one is um, <coughs> set by UV light, so we do need to put this in the sun or obviously put a UV light on there. But we're basically going to put it over these copper tracks. Once we've, once we've soldered it, we'll put it over the copper tracks, and uh, you know we'll then get it cured. So it will cover up the copper and stop the copper getting attacked by any corrosion and stuff like that. Because over time, any moisture in the air, the copper will eventually rust, corrode, and end up breaking your traces. So we want to get these covered. Right. So if we don't remember what way these went in, you have got a little black minus there and a black minus on this side so your shorter leg when you get capacitors they have a long leg and a short leg your short leg is your minus side and you've also got the big bar down the side that tells you the minus so you need to make sure that goes in uh, the correct way around otherwise they're uh, probably just going to explode on you same with this one we've got the minus side up here so they go that will go in that way around So everything's everything's looking good on here. So let's turn the soldering iron on. Let that warm up. Just get our cheap solder. This came in a, in a kit. I don't even know whether it was leaded or unleaded. Or lead free rather. I think it's lead free. Who knows? Right, so we'll take our smaller one, make sure we get it around the right way with the minus leg going through the minus hole. I'm just going to slide it all the way down on there. Just bend the legs out to the side a bit like that and that will hold that capacitor pretty much where you had it. Right, this is as close as I can get you without being out of focus. Put my glasses on so I can see a little bit better in here. Right, and when you're soldering, you want to make sure you're you're heating the component up. You don't want to just put be putting solder on the end of your iron, sort of blobbing it on there, because then you get a cold solder joint, and you're not actually soldering to the pin and the board. So you want to make sure you get your solder in there, um, get your soldering iron in there, heating up the pin and the board, and then the solder should mount to the board. And the pin. Just hold it there for a second. Pull it away. And again, this side. Should we done that's a bit messy, I think. Say, I'm not an expert at this. Never really sold at anything, so excuse my soldering techniques if you don't like them. Right, let's get the other one done. Someone's probably going to moan at me out there and tell me my soldering is rubbish, but I'm no expert, so any helpful tips would be great rather than just slating me. Zoom me back out. Right, so now I've just got some snips and just snip the extra parts of the legs off. I think 
go nicely soldered to the board. And before we put our solder mask over it, I'm going to just check that everything's working properly. All right, so I think we're ready just to get this back in the board now. Put it back together. All right, so slide this back into its housing. Like so. way around this shield goes on there. I've got the clip clips up the front on the bottom of part of this plastic though so we've got the holes here so it's gonna be that way around. Now plastic back under there. That's it. Those are three located into there. Now we've also got a heat shield for the bottom, which goes on that way around. get all the clips in the right place. So that's all clipped back on there. Now we've just got to solder this all back to the board. I don't know why I keep turning the soldering on and off when I keep needing it. So that sits down in there. So this should hold it all down in, space, in place. So we've just got to solder up all our shield pins to hold the shield in place and then we've got, just got our little ones here. These ones were joined before, the plus and minuses were joined here, or the, the minuses were joined together, the pluses were joined together, they weren't both joined together. And then all these ones were like single points. We don't have to fill the holes up on here, we just want to make sure we got these pins nicely soldered in. Not much around with that small piece of solder anymore. Just want to make sure we get some over this other side. On there. And last crown pin. Right, now we're just going to do our primary, our plus side. Minus. I do like to say that you know these two were joined before and those two were joined before, so that's good. And now these ones have to be singularly done. I think the contact on the board might have gone for this one. Need to unjoin them. Oh no, they're grounds. 
both of those are ground so that's not going to matter I think this one might have lost its trace underneath this trace could have corroded the solder's not sticking to the bottom of it Locks in there a second. So as you might be able to see that isn't quite sticking to the board. which is most probably due to that capacitor leaking and this getting corroded. I'm just going to have a quick look under the magnifying glass, clean it up. Still got some contact down there. I think it still is connected partially. All right, so just to make sure that these are connected again, we can put our multimeter on continuity so we can just touch our pin there at the top and we can follow down the board to the next component or next point where it goes to. There. you just check your continuity so that is connected to the board I might before I put this back together just put a, a trace over there like a wire trace just in case you know, this one could possibly go so if you ever have a pin or, or a trace that's um, gone on the board here you know don't worry you can still fix it you just have to run a wire trace which is just a normal piece of wire and uh, just run it from here over to here. Obviously it has to be an insulated piece of wire because you don't want it touching any other points or contacts on this board. Alright so I'm just going to check my solder joints. I think this one needs a little bit more. I think this one needs a little bit more over this side. Still see a little hole on there. Uh, and then we'll uh, plug it in and see if we get our voltages. Alright so we're ready to get this set up now. We're just going to plug our lead into the back. This The lead is still turned off at the moment. Enough there. I'm right, just going to bring our multimeter in and get this ready. And put it onto volts because we're going to be checking our voltages. Uh, put it on DC because we're checking the DC voltage of capacitors and the other parts. Right now, when this is, we're going to turn this on, and you just want to keep your hands anywhere from this primary side. Uh, we'll show you the voltages that are coming through there. Let's turn it around so you can see. Right, so we're powering this on. Right, so we're powered up. So, we're going to check where our plus and minus is on our big capacitor over this side. This is a 400 volts capacitor, so be careful. So, we're just going to put our pins on there. And then we've got 332 volts going into that capacitor. And which obviously then comes up to here. We can check these points. You go 332 volts up in there as well. Now down here, we're going to check our voltages that should now be coming out of here. So if you remember, we had the six volts on the bottom, and then we got two ground pins and uh, 13 volts. So we can just put our black terminal on a ground pin. Now let's check our six volts. There we go, 5.93, so 6 volts coming out there, and our 13 volt rail, 
we've got exactly 13 volts near enough so we now have power going through our transformer and um, coming out at our correct voltages the other side so looking good that is working all right so just turn the power off now and this is what you want to be careful of is your capacitors are still holding voltage although it's gone down to 20 volts already so you can see the voltage is dropping but what you get if this part of it if there's components in here that aren't working sometimes your power from your capacitor can't go anywhere it will get stuck because the components aren't working so these capacitors can stay charged up they can stay charged to 300 volts and not discharge because it's got nowhere to go if capacitors are you know shorted or faulty or broken inside so you still have to be so careful of these capacitors but this one is all working properly now so it's all pretty much draining down quickly we're down to six volts so this is now pretty much safe to handle Uh, but yeah that's it so we need to now we'll unplug this get it back in the board and see if it's working although I do need to take uh, this shield back off uh, by undoing these ground pins we do need to put that um, solder mask onto our board but let's check see if this is working first so I'm just going to get our case back in I'll drop our board back in so our AC just slides back through the back of there. Get it down in place. And then at the front of here, we had this set of pins that it just needs to push down into, like so. Just got a couple of boards, um, a couple of boards, a couple of screws that holds this board in place. Usually they're marked on the board with a little double arrow, so you know where to put your screws back in. Which I think was just two on here. It's two down this end because we have two screws in the back. Two screws in the back of here that hold our AC power adapter in there so that sort of holds the board down. And now we've just got a connector inside as well. So you flip her over. Uh, we have a connector here that just pushes down. If you can see in there, that's just this connector here just pushes down into place. So I'm just gonna push that down. Make sure that connects. A bit awkward to show you. Just put my hand underneath the board so it's not pushing the board out. There you go, that's pushed down, that's on there now. Right, we should. We should be able to test this as it is now. See if we get any lights on. So let's plug our power in. Uh, just try to think if there's anything on the um, front cover that will stop this from working. I don't think there is. Actually, I might. Just gonna put the bottom back on it so I can I can move it around and touch the bottom without electrocute myself. So I'm gonna be picking up, I'm gonna be putting my hands underneath, and I don't want to be touching any of this bottom board because it's very high voltage as you saw. Safe for me to now lift it up and move it around to 
show you. Oh, fingers crossed. Let's plug this back in. Right. We are plugged in. Right, turn it on. Oh, we've got noises. Let's turn this light out a minute. We have got lights on the front. You see we're lit up here. We've got um, two green lights on our... This is our power display. The motor inside is now spinning. Not sure if you can see that. This motor's spinning. Let's see if we can inject this tape. I have removed the tape from the mechanism. But we've got some grinding going on now when we're trying to eject the tape. something in there it's not liking. Strange noises. Right, so we know we've definitely got power to it now, so we know that power part of it is fixed. Um, now we've just got to work out why this mechanism isn't working. Uh, but we're going to leave it there for now. We've got the power supply, supply fixed. Uh, we've shown you how to fix that. Let me just turn this off. Actually, I'm going to leave it on a second. So that's our power over there. So there we go. We can turn the display off. So we know we've got power going to the board now. So that's that fixed. I'm going to leave it here for now. This mechanism is going to be another video maybe. If I can work it out. But yeah, so I think the uh, I think the woman was definitely lying that she only had it working, uh, you know, a week before she sold it. Works lovely. Firstly, you know, I I I did kind of think that maybe the power supply on it could have blown where it's not been used for a little while and just been maybe sat there before she sold it to me. Uh, but no, the tape's still in there. The tape won't eject. The tape was still all around the mechanism, but I, I just removed it from all of there. Uh, so I think the woman was definitely telling me some porkies. And that's probably why she was only selling it for £4 as well. But this is why, you know, we take these risks for £4. We've now fixed the power supply with probably just over £2. Well, we paid £2 for the parts, but we have got loads left now. So, you know, they're, they're literally like 20, one was 20p, one was 15p, something like that. And we have the power supply fixed. Now we just have to look at the rest of it. But, hope you enjoyed watching this video. Uh, please join me for the next one, whatever we will be doing. It could be fixing the mechanism on here, if I can figure it out. Uh, please subscribe if you like these videos. And join me when we try and fix... The next dodgy item that someone sells is a car booze house. <laughs> but this is great. This is working. Thanks for watching. And I'll see you soon. Bye-bye.